Hi, 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 and welcome to LNA Does Audio Stuff. So here we are, another all about Ableton Live tutorial. So if you are interested to learn more, please check out this whole playlist full of super detailed, super fun, <laughs> super approachable um, tutorials about Ableton Live, and you will be a pro after it. I promise. <laughs> so in this video, we will be learn all about gate. So it will be the, the technicalities of a gate, but also some creative music production tips for you to learn and use in your music production. So let's get into this tutorial now, now, now. <laughs> Hello. Hello. It's a device that passes only signal that goes above a certain threshold. So we set a line and only things, loudness that goes above a certain threshold will be played. That's it. But it can be used so many different ways. The most common way of using it is just using it to kind of tidy up, take away unnecessary noise, uh, example, take away the certain uh, decays of a sound, decays of a reverb, maybe in them tighter. So example, drums, make them more precise. We have this screen that shows the threshold and also the return. So we have the threshold line on the top and return line on the uh, bottom. And then on the right, we see the amount of gain reduction that is being done. A bit like in compression, we see how much is being cut away. But the difference between compression and gate is that gate actually like cuts it away where compression like squashes it. So there is a couple things about the visualization that we, we need to see. So uh, we, the gray area with the white line is the output. So that's what we will hear here. So that's what we are hearing. And then if I lift the threshold, we can see this we can see this other gray area which doesn't have white line behind there. And that is the input. That's the input and that's the output. So we're seeing them same time. So we can monitor constantly visually what's happening. So let's have a look what happens with the threshold. So we have first on the bottom. So everything will be passed through. And now let's slowly bring it up and see what happens. So the loudest uh, transients of the signal are basically kick and a little bit of a snare. And if I go uh, to 314 dp, you can't hear anything because everything's being gain reduced. Then we have the return under the threshold. So there's another word, fancy word for it called hysteresis. Hysteresis? Blah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's one that I needed to Google because you know how I love the fancy words. The hysteresis, so the return, is the difference between the level that opens the gate and closes the gate. So it's this kind of mid-range area that allows us to use gate really creatively, which is really cool. And I love this hysteresis or whatever return. Basically what that means is that higher values, so when it's higher value, we're letting more in. And when it's lower, we actually let less in. And that's why we get this kind of chatter, like ch -ch 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 effect. Okay, so let's set the threshold somewhere like just uh, under the higher transients. Okay, so right now we have a very small number values. So it's going to be very like do, 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 do. It doesn't let much in, but look what happens what more bigger values we put on the return. So 
So it's basically, as I said, it's the between area between when it opens and closes. So then we have Flip and Flip is actually so cool. So I really love using it and this especially for sound design purposes can be so cool. So if we flip it, it does the opposite. So everything under the threshold will be passed and over the threshold will be cut. So let's uh, try this out. So now if I have a zero, so remember now, last time we heard everything when we were having as um, zero threshold, but now if I lift it up, we start to hear things. And this is especially where it's good to look at the input, not the output on the, um, on the display. And use return. Sounds a bit funny, but uh, with different kind of drums, it can sound really cool or different elements or different synthesizers because you can only hear the highest uh, transients, but you're not going to hear the whole body. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Okay, and then under there, we have a look ahead. So basically we have zero uh, milliseconds, 1.5 milliseconds and 10 milliseconds. So gates can have issues with delays. Gate can only happen when the in input signal is actually like there. So when the input signal occurs, so that's why gating is always a little bit late. So that's why we need this kind of cool thing called look ahead where we can delay the input signal from here and we can set the amount of delay that we want the input signal to be delayed. So, and this can actually have quite drastic changes on certain uh, signals. So as every signal is different, it depends how if it's going to be a massive change, but it's definitely good to have a look around this if you have issues with the gate. Okay, so the next area we have here is the envelope area. So we have attack, hold and release. So usually we just have attack and release on envelope areas, but this time we have attack, hold and release. The attack is the like, how fast does it go from close to open? Hold is the time that the signal is below the threshold. So how long it's been kind of cut away. And release is the, the return from that. So how long does it take to close again once it has been open. So open and close means that when we are gating, so we almost have like a door. Are we cutting it? Are we not? Are we cutting it? Are we not? <laughs> so attack is how fast are we opening it? Hold is how long it's been basically open. How, how long are we holding it under the threshold? So then release is how fast the gate, the gate, literally the gate, it's like a door. How fast does the gate close once it has been open? So it's open. Attack, hold, release. <laughs> it's a door. Okay, so let's see how that affects it. So we have a threshold, a return. Let's put kind of medium return. Long hold. We can hear a lot more when the hold is very long. Short hold. So very slow attack. So example for drums, this kind of cool to have a longer attack, shorter hold and shorter release. And we're going to get that kind of little bit of pulsing effect. Or other way around, we can have a very short attack, longer release. So now the the closing and opening is very defined. It kind of opens very uh, fast, then it 
kind of <laughs> the signal is not there for very long and then it releases really fast as well. Opens very fast, holds it quite long and then releases really fast. This one could be quite nice from very natural drums as well, especially if you want to just delete some kind of noise from under it. Because sometimes there might be uh, room sounds or uh, bleeding from other instruments and you just want to return, take those, but you don't want any kind of pumping sound. So maybe then fast attack, longer hold and fast release would be good. Okay, so then we have floor. So floor is basically, um, has another fancy word in the explanation. <laughs> the reduction of at attenuation attenuation so basically the reduction of the force of when the gate is open so if you have it as zero the gate is basically not it's same as it would be bypassed at all completely and then if we have a floor you can see look at the gain reduction when i put floor up how much it goes literally to the end here. So we are really taking, so it's the force of how much is it reduct, reducing? Is it the black hole of signal or is it does it just push it down a little bit? So how much gain reduction is being applied when the when the door is open. Okay, so then gate also has a side chain. Do, 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 do. So it has set exactly the similar than a uh, compressor. So when you do a side chaining with compressor, uh, it's doing the ducking effect. So it ducks, example, when you use your kick or something, it ducks because it kind of goes, presses it down, but it doesn't cut. I'm gonna go to a bass. So this is the bass track without the gate. Side chain, activate it, and from the input, I'm just going to select the drums, okay? And post FX is the what I want, and gain is the input gain or the mix, um, the amount of the mix that is coming in. So then also I have an EQ that I'm going to show you in a minute what that means. And let's get going. So let's use the threshold and return at a cold and release and floor uh, to create cool rhythm. So what I'm gonna do is that I have the drums now playing and I'm gonna mute the track so that we can only hear the bass. So you can see the input and then you see the output, what's going out. Oh, and then let's use attack and release to add a rhythm. So we are now getting that effect on. So the EQ, because the drums actually have a very, so they have hi-hats, they have snare, but also bass. So this is filtering is what a frequency range of the input is actually affecting the effect. So example, if I just the kick, I want only the kick to affect the signal. I'm going to put a low pass filter and the filter around the area that the kick is at. Or if I want only the high hats, then I can go and put like a high shelf example and go to the high end. You can hear the high hats kind of kicking it a little bit. So then together with the drums, it sounds like this. cool with the groove actually. A little bit slower attack so we get that we get that kind of like a movement into the uh, into the bass. And then using floor 
um, and how much we're cutting is actually we can create even more interesting sound. So listen to this. Gonna really, I'm, I'm just really feeling this. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, please hit the bell icon and please make sure that you come here every single Sunday because there is a lot of similar type of content if you like this. Also, make sure to check out my merch that is in the link down below. It's so cool. So thank you also for everybody who's part of my Patreon family. Here is the names of the beautiful people, part of my Patreon family. I post there more content, uh, live streams, Q and A's, all kind of fun stuff. So please join us if you wish uh, from the link down below. So thank you so much for watching. Please come here again and see you next Sunday. See you next Sunday. Bye. Bye.